1910, the average American slept about nine hours a night. But with the invention of the light bulb, TVs, iPhones, computers, and of course, Netflix and Amazon Prime, the lore for 24-hour day fun or work, knowing somewhere in some time zone someone else is working while you indulge in sleep, the pull to neglect sleep has never been stronger. We now average about 6.8 hours, and that number is declining. In a recent interview with Jeff Bezos, Amazon's founder and the wealthiest man in the world, Jeff was asked what the secret is to his success. And he replied, eight hours of sleep. And when asked why he protects and prioritizes sleep, he said, I have more energy. I think better and I feel better. Now, sleep science actually shows us if we shortchange our sleep, we shortchange our energy, our mental performance, and our health. When we don't get the sleep we need during the night, we suffer during the day. We're not able to bring our best to our families, our businesses, our careers, or perform at our highest level. Now think about it. You cannot eat for a couple of weeks. Gandhi did it for 21. You cannot move your body for a couple of months or even years. About 70% of us don't move our bodies enough. But if you miss a single night of sleep, you are not showing up the next day. And if you do show up, you're going to show up as a fraction of yourself. So growing up, one of my nicknames was Narco. <laughs> For those of you wondering, nothing to do with dealing drugs. Actually, because I am blessed with the amazing gift of sleep, which makes it really ironic that now I help people get sleep. And to be honest, I never thought of sleep as a gift. It wasn't until I began to study sleep and help countless clients that struggle with chronic insomnia and hear their stories about how lack of sleep impacted some important aspect of their life. Sometimes it was their health. Sometimes it was their relationship. And very often it was a career or even a business. But I don't need to sleep. I do fine with a few hours sleep. Sleep's wasted time. I'll sleep when I'm dead. The early bird gets the worm. And my personal favorite, you snooze, you lose. Think about how many of these statements we've said to ourselves. As a society, we see sleep as lazy. We see it as a waste of time. There's a huge disconnect between sleep and its critical function to our health and performance. But it turns out sleep is not a waste of time. It's actually the single most effective thing we can do every day to reset our brains, our bodies, and our mental performance. When we don't get the sleep we need, our energy suffers. And without energy, we go for the sugar over the salad. We go for the TV over the treadmill. And that glass of wine, that glass of wine quickly becomes the entire bottle. We're overworked, we're overwhelmed, and we're overweight. And I believe it's largely due to the fact that we're underslept. I believe the health epidemic we're experiencing is really a sleep epidemic. And science now shows us that the shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. Because it's during sleep that our immune systems activate. It's during sleep that our bodies repair and recover. And being insufficiently slept is linked to all the major diseases, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, stroke, Alzheimer's, and dementia. In a recent study with over 3,000 U.S. adults, over the age of 45, it was found that those who slept less than six hours a night were twice as likely to experience a stroke or heart attack than those who slept between six and eight hours. In another study, it was found that after just one night sleeping less than four hours a night, our natural T killer cells, those superheroes of the immune system, dropped by 70%. Those are the cells that help us fight cancer. In fact, the World Health Organization has labeled working the night shift a probable carcinogen. But sleep is not only critical to our health, it's also critical to our mental performance. Because when we don't get the sleep we need, 
The prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that's responsible for executive functioning, decision making, reasoning, planning, and executing on those plans, diminishes. And without that part of the brain working, we make mistakes. And some of the biggest mistakes in history have been linked to sleep deprivation. The Space Shuttle Challenger explosion, killing seven crew members. The Exxon Valdez oil spill, polluting the oceans and killing hundreds of thousands of sea creatures. The Three Mile Island nuclear disaster. Think about the last time you made a mistake. Maybe it was at work, on a spreadsheet, or in a hiring decision. Or maybe it was, it was at home, cooking. Or maybe it was driving down the road. Chances are, if you can think back to that time that you made the mistake, I bet you it was because you were tired. I bet you because you were possibly insufficiently slept. So what are some of the upsides of getting enough sleep? When we get the sleep we need, we're able to come up with new, creative, innovative ideas. And some of the most amazing ideas actually have happened during the night. Paul McCartney came up with this, the lyrics for the song, Yesterday in a Dream. Dmitry Mendeleev came up with the idea for the periodic table in a dream. Mary Shelley got the idea for the book Frankenstein in a dream. And Eliza Howes got the idea to finish the sewing machine in a dream. Dreaming allows us to come up with new, innovative, creative ideas. Sleep also acts as emotional first aid because when we get the sleep we need, we're able to better express emotion. We're better able to interpret emotional events. Simply put, when we sleep well, we do better in our relationships. So after realizing that sleep is the foundation that extraordinary health is built on, I decided to test the ROI of sleep. So I took 20 people between the ages of 25 and 65, and I ran them through a sleep and performance case study program. Now the goals of the program were to see how by increasing sleep quality over six weeks, how that translated to increase in quality of life, specifically across three areas, daytime energy levels, focus, and mood. So the constants in the study were a consistent bed and rise time. This is a staple for high quality sleep. And then eliminating alcohol and caffeine. Sorry, guys. <laughs> then what we did each week is we tested a sleep experiment, something that's been known to help increase the quality of sleep. And this is where you're going to want to take some notes. So the first thing we tested was a simple breath meditation designed to help the participants shift from a stress state to a rest state or a sympathetic state to a parasympathetic state. The next week, what we did is we tested a 90-minute screen curfew, allowing the participants to not be exposed to blue light, the type of light that actually turns off the melatonin faucet in our bodies. And as you know, melatonin is a sleep hormone. In week three, we tested a three-hour fasting window, allowing the participants' bodies to focus on repair and recovery versus digestion during the night. In the fourth week, we tested creating an optimal sleep environment, one that was cold, 65 degrees, dark, using an eye mask or blackout curtains, and quiet, using earplugs. I refer to this as a sleep sanctuary. In week five, we tested taking 10-minute breaks every hour to see how mitigating stress throughout the day affected quality of sleep in the night. And the last thing we tested was a doctor-formulated sleep supplement designed to help the participants overcome the common nutritional deficiencies that get in the way of sleep, specifically vitamin D and magnesium. So, the conclusions of the study. 90% of the participants reported that on the weeks they did get quality sleep, they did experience better energy, more mental focus, and a, better, and a better mood, which leads me to the next conclusion. There wasn't a one-size-fits-all approach that worked for everyone. Certain weeks, certain sleep experiments worked really well for certain participants, and other weeks, not so much. There isn't a silver bullet to getting better sleep. 
Sleep is as personal as diet and exercise. So you have to be open to experimenting with your sleep. The third thing we concluded from the study is that prioritizing sleep can better help us do good in life, when life happens or when the hits the fan, right? There were several to- people in the study that had life events happen. For instance, one of the participants had to undergo surgery. Another participant had to fly across several time zones for a work emergency. Another participant chose to stay up to support a family member through a difficult time. And each of these participants reported by prioritizing their sleep, by protecting their sleep prior to these life events, they were better able to deal with these life events. So how can you all capitalize ROI of sleep? The first way is to prioritize and protect it. Create a non-negotiable eight-hour sleep opportunity or sleep window each night. Give yourself permission to rest. You deserve it. The second way is to measure it. And we now have fantastic tools to accurately measure sleep quality. The tool we use in the sleep and performance case study I'm actually wearing on my finger. This little ring measures sleep efficiency, which is the time in bed you're actually asleep, sleep latency, how fast you fall asleep, body temperature, heart rate, heart rate variability, which is the time in between each heartbeat, stages of sleep. This little ring can tell you a lot about your sleep. And we manage what we measure. So measuring sleep allows you to see how when you take new action during the day, how that affects your night. And how by affecting your night, your day is affected. The last way is to master stress. We gotta get better at stress. We gotta get better at thinking about stress. We gotta get better at releasing stress from our bodies. A large body of evidence that shows a bi-directional link between sleep and stress. Meaning, the more stress you experience, the lower quality your sleep. The lower quality your sleep, the more stress you experience. So how do we get off this vicious cycle? We get better at stress. My hope is that you no longer see sleep as wasted time or as a luxury. Jeff Bezos was right. Sleep really is a secret to success because the ROI of sleep is positively compounded across every aspect of our lives, our health, our mental performance, and our relationships. My hope is that you now rethink sleep and rethink that all too common phrase of you snooze, you lose. Because when you snooze, you actually win. Thank you very much. Thank you.